it's Cypher here, coming at you with another mini-sode. The Legend of Ben Hall is a great example of how to make a good western about a famous outlaw. The only problem is, it's not a western. It's an Aussie flick. Ben Hall was a bushranger, Australia's equivalent of a desperado. But there are some key differences. Many have drawn similarities between the Australian outback and the American West. Both have wide open ranges without forests. Both experienced rapid expansion during the 19th century. Both had indigenous peoples that were conquered by white people. The frontiers of both had much violence associated with them. I've even seen comparative histories made specifically on this subject. But the comparison kind of ends there. It's surface level at best. Australia ought to be considered her own thing rather than trying to compare their history to ours. Certainly, our historiography can apply, you know, like can we apply the Turner thesis to Australia? And I think so, but only in a limited fashion. We shouldn't forget that Australia was founded as a penal colony in 1787. That's more than a century after English settlement in the New World. It remained a British colony well after they ended prison transportation. Essentially, prisoners were forced to be colonists for a century. Also, the Aborigines were far fewer in population than American Indians. Along with not having centuries of interaction before their final conquest, the frontier wars of Australia really only lasted for about a century, though there were, of course, small and sporadic conflicts all the way into the 1930s. Penal transportation was dying out by the time Ben Hall began to be a bushranger in the 1860s. But penal transportation wouldn't end until 1868 which was after Hall's death in 1865. This movie is about the last years of his career. Hall was a bandit in a time that bandits populated the land. He was a native Australian and the son of convicts. His parents were convicted of petty theft and sent to New South Wales. He was 24 when he began to rob people on the roads between towns, which Aussies called bailing up. Why did you become a bushranger? A couple of years back. The police took a set against me because I was friendly with Frank Gardner. Pottinger threw me in the logs for almost a month. After that, I helped Gardner with the escort robbery. He started by running with some gangs and eventually created his own. They had a few famous robberies and escapes. After the killing of a policeman during a robbery by John Gilbert, his closest associate, the Felons Apprehension Act was put into law in 1865. Until that time, Hall played it safe by never killing any victims. Today, you branded us as killers. Half the country will be gunning for us now. This act made it legal for anyone, and I do mean anyone, to kill Ben Hall. Any citizen may apprehend or take said outlaws, dead or alive. He was ambushed and killed by police at a supposed friend's house in 1865, only four years into his career. He's kind of an obvious candidate for the whole social banditry thing, right? Although the whole refusal to kill thing might be somewhat admirable, it's still a very problematic myth. Heck, Australia understood how bad that myth was before Hopsbaum even wrote his work that explicitly mentions some bushrangers. Though, not Hall. In 1912, they banned the creation of movies about bushrangers, because social banditry mythmaking promotes violence. In the process of this, they stymied their entire film industry. The longest narrative film at the time was about Ned Kelly, and it wouldn't be until after World War II that they retracted the censorship. Luckily, the movie refuses to engage that kind of myth-making. It doesn't try to make this into a revenge flick or a tale of a rebellion. Instead, it only looks at Hall's last year and does not romanticize the man. It's kind of brilliant. And I can tell you why. It had a very close relationship with its historical advisor. Peter Bradley is a local historian on the subject, and happens to be a distant relative of Ben Hall himself. As a result, this film is accurate as far as I can tell. Since it focuses the subject down to one year, it doesn't need to fictionalize too much. This is the mark of a good historical film. They always narrow their subject as much as possible. Even the dialogue is often taken directly from newspaper accounts. Really great stuff. I won't take the life of another man who hasn't first tried to take mine. Plus, the plot is engaging, since it is essentially a survival tale, but with robbery. You aren't meant to think of bailing up people as a good thing, just something that Hall was good at. Moral ambiguity, you gotta love it. 
So check it out. It's too bad the film didn't come to the US until a year after its release in Australia. I think it would have done really well here. That's why it wasn't on my 2016 list. But you better believe it'll be on my 2017 version. At least once I get through enough movies to make it.